All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all doing all right in these times that we're in, all right? Now, today I want to discuss about enjoying your life, living your best life, you know, living a full, abundant life, you know, being happy, some real joy, you know what I'm saying? Like, God wants us to be happy. God wants us to live a full life, you know. In these crazy times that we're in, of course, during this whole pandemic and so much going on in this country, so much going on in this world. A lot of things are giving people anxiety. A lot of things are giving people so much worry and doubt. A lot of people are losing strength and losing hope and losing faith. And we have to remember that we serve a mighty God and that God wants us to still live a full life despite all these things going on, believe it or not. There's so much Bible scriptures that talks about joy and being happy and embracing life and enjoying your youth and doing so much activities under the sun. And we cannot let anything rob us from our joy. We cannot let the enemy or this world steal our happiness because we owe it to ourselves to live a full life. We owe it to ourselves to be truly happy. Some of us have suffered a bit too long. Some of us have been a bit too hard on ourselves. Some of us have been a bit too um, critical to where we feel like we don't deserve things or we don't or we feel like we shouldn't get the best out of life, where we shouldn't get the best out of things, you know, and we, and we should. Um, you went through too much hell to not experience heaven on earth. Because people always talk about hell on earth and trials and tribulations and hardships. And, and don't get it twisted. Those things come with life, you know. You can't control everything in life, right? And, you, you know, you go through different things to test your faith and your personality and test your heart. But you can't have heaven on earth, you can enjoy life. And what I mean by that is you can live a full abundant life. You can be happy, like real happiness, not just the mood swing or a little emotional happy. I'm talking about like legit, a happy, spiritually happy, you know, just a real great condition, being in a good place, having a real peace of mind. You know, my heart and soul in a real good place. You can't have that. You know, the problem is that people don't believe they can have those things because of the experiences that they had or the trauma that they experienced or, um, you know, just certain people they've dealt with and stuff, they always just feel like things should only be this way or things should only be about this way. A lot of people are very dogmatic and very, like, hard on themselves. And people kind of have poor self-esteem and just look at things a little too low. And we, we, we serve a mighty God, you know. Like, we're made in his image and likeness. You, you don't think God uh, enjoys things as well? Like, you have to remember, like, the you know, like, all the prophets and the men and women of God and you know, Christ, even they all enjoyed their lives in certain ways. Like when that when Christ turned that water into wine, that was his way of enjoying himself because Christ was a man who dealt with so much things and burdens. He had to find ways to lighten up. See, he hanged out with tax collectors and sinners, not only because he was doing God's work and God's will and God led them to him and draw them to him or whatnot. But Christ was also doing that because. You can lighten up with sinners. You can lighten up with, you know, tax collectors, you know, people with money. You ain't gonna lie. You can lighten up and have fun around people like that. Those type, those type of people, even though they tend to be messed up, wicked and evil, they know how to enjoy life though. Even though they're sinful and they're very in the flesh, they know how to enjoy life. You know, real, like self-righteous people and holier than thou people, like them people are just a bit too robotic. They're a bit too strict. They're a bit too stiff. You know, they don't even know how to lighten up a bit. They don't even know how to like really have a good time. You know, they always usually crap in people's style or, you know, being a party pooper or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? You know, Christ wasn't a party pooper. You know, he was at the wedding and they needed wine and Christ did that miracle for them. <laughs> you know, I remember I was watching the, um, I think it was a king of comedy, uh, comedy stand. I think it was D.L. Hughley. I mean, he, you know, like all the comedians, and he, he, you know, he, he made a joke about that, but, you know, it's funny. You know, it's true. You know, like how would the wedding have been if there was no wine there? So Christ made it fun. Christ made them enjoy themselves. Christ made them enjoy the, the, the moment, you know, and that's that should be about us. You know, like we need to enjoy our lives. So we need to make others enjoy their lives as well. You know, we can't just be happy and enjoy life just for the sake of social media and trying to impress people, try to make it seem like we're balling and all that. We have to like live a real honest life with it. You get what I'm saying? And there's so much different ways to enjoy your life. You could travel, you go into nature, you could do different activities, you get out your comfort zone, do silly stuff, get into art. There's so much ways to have fun. Certain people 
can have fun all by themselves if they're introverted or whatnot or um, just like the state of themselves. Some people take their own selves to dinner or they, or they some people eat out at night by themselves. Some people go to a restaurant all by themselves or they go to the movies by themselves. Some people are like that. And then other people, they go with their spouse, their wife, their husband, their partner, their girlfriend, boyfriend, what have you, you know, friends with benefits, whatever, whatever it is. Someone you just met around the way. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, you have your fun. That's your business. All right. You, you know, sometimes you go out with a group of friends, you know, or, or a group gathering or a life group, you know, things like that. Like there's so much ways you can have fun in this world. You know, there's so much activities to get done. There's so much places to see. Like we all need to travel the world, man. You know, we're so hard nosed in this America lifestyle, and this USA stuff. And I'm like, man, it's, 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 a, it's a world much bigger than the USA. There's so much countries we haven't even seen yet. So much foods we haven't even ate, eaten yet. We, there's so much cultures we haven't experienced. There's so much languages we haven't even learned yet. Like, we have to really get out of our comfort zone. We have to really explore. We have to really learn something. You get what I'm saying? You can't really learn something unless you really go out physically and really live it. Okay, like, research and Google search and stuff is cool, but you have to really be hands-on and live it, man. You know, you have to actually be in these places at these opportune times, you know. We got to really enjoy our lives and be happy, man, because... We, we, we owe it to ourselves, man. Okay, we've we been through enough hell down here. We've been through enough challenges and crazy stuff, man. We've been through a lot of uncontrollable things, bro. It's time for us to, you know, steer that back, man. It's time for us to be more positive, more fun, man. Have some joy. Have something to really smile and laugh about. You get what I'm saying? And not a fake forced smile or a fake forced laugh. Like, like a real enjoyment. You get what I'm saying? Because you can't just suffer and then... Nah, man, that's not a way to live, you know, like we go through ups and downs, we, we you know, we have our bumps and, and whatnot, we struggles and whatnot, but we'll, we'll get through the, the crazy stuff, man, things will open up, things will get better, you know, there's light in the tunnel, like for real, you know, go get you a passport and go try to take a nice little trip somewhere, you know, or if you want to stay in the States, you know, just go on nice little road trips, go, you know, go down South, go to the West Coast, go to the Northwest, go to the Pacific, you know what I'm saying? Go to the Midwest, go up north, see see different stuff, you know. Try to go to Hawaii, try to go to the islands, you know. We have to, like, get more into that, you know what I mean, because we owe it to ourselves. We definitely need a mental vacation. We definitely need to break away from all this craziness that we're going through, right? In a lot of cases, we just need a break from people, you know what I mean? We need a break from these routines and these hob- hobbies, activities that we're doing on a daily, you know, because a lot of us are in a rut right now. All of us are in a rut. We feel overworked. We feel like, dang, I got to work, 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 and bills, 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 and dang, I got to do this, obligations, duties, running errands, dang, I got to do this. And it's like we get so caught up in that routine that we, we it, 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 it starts to become our life. And, and, that's, and that's not how life should always be lived, you know. Life should always be revolved around work. Life should always be revolved around running an errand or doing a duty, you know what I'm saying, or doing something for somebody, you know, so you need to do something for yourself, you need to reward yourself, you know, like, dang, pat yourself on the back or something, like, go out and do something for you, you know what I mean, you give so much time to people, you don't even give time to yourself, you don't even give time to the most high, and it's like, how can you truly enjoy your life if you're always doing something for somebody, if you can't break away for a little bit and try to get your own little free time, your own me time, how can you live a full life like that? You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we got to see the world, man. You know, don't let this pandemic steal your joy. Don't let all this stuff, like, kill your, kill your vibe, man. You, you, there, there's so much you have to live for. There's so much things you have to see, man. You know, there's, there's so much stuff you can still get out here and maintain, bro. There's a lot of places to see, sis. I'm telling y'all, man. Like, y'all need to see Japan. You know, you want to see India, you know, you, you, you want to see Italy. You want to see Barcelona, Spain. You, you want to see the whole Spain. You want to see, you know, Iceland, you know. You want to see Brazil. You want to see Peru, you know. You want to see Mexico. You want to see Canada. You want to see these these real beautiful places, man. Like, don't you get tired of just seeing these bucket lists and these wish lists, you know, like on the Internet, like on Facebook and Instagram, like, ooh, I'm going to go there. Ooh, man, I'd be nice to go there. Like, why don't you really make it happen physically, you know. Because just being in a rut and being in your current situation and just wishing for stuff and not really planning it or manifesting it or moving towards it, it does nothing for you. It's just words with no actions. Like, fun doesn't just fall from the sky. 
we have to make time for like things like that. You know, there's nothing wrong with having fun and pleasure. It's just a balance of it, right? But we need more enjoyment in our lives, you know, because a lot of us are a bit too hard nosed. A lot of us are too rigid. We're too rigid. A lot of us are just too like blue collar. We're just so like our heads down so hard, you know. We gotta pick our heads up, look up, look around and find some fun stuff to do and get out of our comfort zone, get out of our routines, get out of our own way. You know, stop hanging with people that's always like, oh, that's boring, or you weird, or you corny. Stay away from people like that. You can never have fun with people like that. If you got to go out and do something by yourself, then let it be. Because it's better to go out and do something fun all by yourself than to force people around you to do something you want to do. Or first, force people to see your interest. You get what I'm saying? Whatever your interest is, whatever your hobbies, whatever makes you happy, man, do it. All right? <laughs> you don't owe anybody your happy. You owe yourself happiness, bro. Okay, these people out here are straight up miserable. They don't want to live for nothing. They don't want to go out for nothing. They, they, they want to stay right where they ass at. You need to go enjoy your life. Your ass went through too much to not enjoy yourself. Your ass done went through too much hell to not go out and see something, all right? You need to get out your comfort zone. You need to really explore. You feel me? Straight up, man. Let us enjoy our lives. Live it to the fullest. Live your best life, okay? Live your best life. You, whatever adventurous stuff you want to do, do it. If you, if you want to climb a mountain, you want to go bungee jumping, you want to go skydiving, whatever, snowboarding, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever activity you want to do, man, do it, man. More travel, less stress, okay? We could all use a nice trip right now. We could all use a nice vacation right now. We could all use a nice getaway right now, don't we? Just look at where you're at right now. Look at how you live and be honest with yourself. Like, dang, I need to stop doing this or dang, I'm still, I'm still here, you know? You need to... Get out of your own way. Get your head out your ass, you know. And go enjoy your life. You owe it to yourself. All right? And, you know, and, you know, I had to use this language on y'all, man, because just like, you know what I mean? I'm I'm currently fighting for my joy and my happiness. I'm honest, you feel me? And I'm currently just hard working, working hard and in a rut. And I'm working towards out of this lifestyle. I'm working towards moving to something new, you feel me? So I'm trying to, I'm working towards manifesting all this and wanting to travel the world and wanting to see beautiful things, man, and, and, and just really, you know, expand, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, expand. You know what I'm saying? So we all need to get out of our own way and start living better, having more fun, having more enjoyment, okay? Like, this world is too big to not explore it. This world has too much beautiful places to not go out and see it, all right? So even the Bible talks about enjoying your life throughout the Old and New Testament, but especially in the New Testament, you know, like all these people in the Bible, they all enjoyed their lives. You know, Abraham was able to enjoy his wealth and his riches and all the things he had. You know, David was a musician. He was a warrior. He was a king, man. David lived a full life. David lived life on the edge, man. <laughs> David had a larger life personality. That man was a cold person. Now that dude, that man was wildin', but he he lived. A, he had fun with it. You know what I'm saying? He was tripping, disobeying the Most High, but he, you know, in a flesh way, like he he was enjoying his life. You know, Solomon was tripping too, but he he enjoyed his life. You know, I just think he got they they, they indulged a little too hard. They got too caught with the pleasures, and that's a problem. But like I said, you got to moderate things as they are. But you do need joy. You need you do need pleasure. You do need to have fun. Okay, you can't walk around here like a robot all stiff. That ain't a way to live life, you know what I'm saying? You need something to laugh and smile about. You need something to learn. You need to see new scenery. You need to get out your comfort zone. You need to see new places, all right? Because waking up doing the same old thing, that's some miserable crap that we're all dealing with right now. You know, these these miserable-ass jobs, these miserable-ass habits, these miserable-ass uh, li lifestyles and habits and routines We need to outgrow this stuff uh, Some of us already have outgrown it And we're just figuring out ways to like really um, Get more like financially stable To get like an opportunity To like really get out of this you know And including myself you, you feel me like I'm doing this podcast stuff and everything But I'm like man I'm, I got my personal battles too Like just cause I do these messages And positive words that don't mean any, Like I still got my ways too and what I want out of life You feel me and I want to pass that on to y'all Like y'all should want things out of life too I don't know your personal exact situation, but I do know you definitely want to enjoy your life. I do know you want places to see. I do know you definitely want to enjoy the finer things of life and have some luxury or see nice places and stuff like that. Have some beautiful experiences, you know. 
Like, think about how amazing it would be you go on a nice trip or a nice place, nice vacation, and you just in nice nature or waterfalls or a beach or sunset or a nice yacht or a nice ass view. And you got some and you got a, a, a beautiful person with you and y'all just kicking it. Y'all making love or whatever. And like that's that's how you enjoy life. You, you, enjoy, you enjoy experiences and moments like that. You know what I'm saying? You, we're all in a rut right now. We're all working our ass off. We're all trying to survive. We're all paying bills. We're all paying off debts. We're all trying to clean up our credit. We see we do all this rut, all this system American stuff, this lifestyle, this adult and crap ain't it. <laughs> OK, this struggling stuff ain't it. All right. So this is why I encourage y'all to enjoy our lives, bro. Okay? We have to get back to that. You know what I'm saying? People always tripping about, um, you know, trauma and mental health and all that. We're, we're, like, we're, we're so stuck on mental health and all that because we're not even enjoying our lives properly. You know, we're not. Look, like, look at our routines. Of course, it's causing mental health problems. <laughs> look at our habits. Look at our routines. Look at how we live every day. Of course, it's going to cause mental health problems. We have to hold ourselves accountable and have high standards and have a high self-esteem and want better for ourselves and want improvement and want results and want to get our comfort zone and want to reward ourselves. A lot of people don't want to reward themselves. Everyone has a sense of entitlement and just want things out the sky, but no one wants to really like take a risk or move out their comfort zone to actually go towards it. You see what I'm saying? Don't be that person just sitting on words with no actions. You want to go out and live your life, you better go out and do it. You better go out and enjoy yourself. All right? This world is too big to not enjoy it, okay? See, this American lifestyle, this American culture, this government got us all angry and down and all bitter. <laughs> you feel me? And we ain't supposed to be like that. You feel me? We acting the way we acted towards each other due to mood swings, bills, <laughs> and all. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we got to actually live right and treat each other right, man. You know what I'm saying? See, in the 90s, people struggled, but they knew how to have fun. Early 2000s, people struggled, but they had fun. Of course, the economy was a bit better back then, but just still, people knew how to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, my childhood was hella fun, super fun. You know what I'm saying? I grew up watching wrestling. I grew up watching the NFL, NBA, when it was the real NFL, the real NBA. I grew up watching cartoons. I played PlayStation 2. I played Nintendo. I had a bomb-ass childhood, man. You know what I'm saying? And when you get to an adulthood, man, this whole thing be a little crazy and overwhelming. But you you still got that little kid in you, you feel me? All of us got golden hearts. And all of us got a child. Of, we're all child at hearts, bro. No matter how much of an old soul we may appear, we still got that little child of heart in us, man. You got you to gotta really tap into that inner child of you, man. You can remember, Christ said that the kingdom of heaven is like these little children. You see, like, we still have a little childish aspects about ourselves. You know, in a certain way, as far as wanting to enjoy stuff, wanting to be happy, being hyper, all the energy, you see, all these adults are all grumpy and angry and, uh, you know, are we ain't supposed to walk around like that. <laughs> you see how these children are jumpy and hyper? That's how we're supposed to really live, believe it or not. There's not the Bible verse that says, as a man, you put away childish things, of course, that's dealing with habits and attitudes, always looking at stuff. But as far as enjoying your life, you still got that inner child in you. All right, don't let nobody take that away from you. Don't let nobody take that joy from you because you need that, all right? The joy of the Lord is your strength. And don't be so heavy minded, you know, earthly good. Like, God wants you to have fun. God wants you to experience things, man. God wants you to enjoy stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? We have to keep working until Christ comes back anyway. So we better have some joy while we're going through all this crap. Don't be just a robot and all angry doing this. You, you better have some joy doing it. You better have traveled every place you always wanted to before Christ come back. You better have experienced every type of food you ate before Christ come back. You better learn every type of language before the Most High Son come back. You, you feel me? You better have enjoyed every experience. Like, man, I done swam in the ocean. I done went skydiving. I done climbed mountains. I done, you know what I'm saying? I went to this beach and made love over there. Like, <laughs> you, you got to live a full life on edge, man. Because you, you owe it to yourself, man. Like, when you look back at your life, how do you want to look at it? Do you want to look at it like, dang, all I did was work crappy nine-to-five jobs and that was it? Or you want to look back and be like, dang, I had one hell of a life. I lived a full life. I had this experience. I did this. I did that. I met this person. I met that person. I ate this food. I went to this beach. I went to this event. I went to uh, this state. I went to this city. I went to this country. I went to, like, life is full of memories, man. Don't make your life full of nightmares. Make your life full of moments and memories, yo. 
You owe it to yourself. No excuses. Stop coming up with excuses, man. Stop with the excuses. Go make your life what it is, yo. Make memories and moments, man. Stop stop having these nightmares and these, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have moments and, and dreams, bro. Real talk. So, I don't know I went on a long rant about this, but I'm just really passionate. And I'm, I'm speaking to myself as well, you know what I'm saying? Because I get caught up sometimes in that stagnant phase. I get caught up in that complacent phase as well. So, I was speaking this to myself as well. And I want to speak that to y'all too, man. We got to be more enthusiastic about stuff. We got to be more joyful, more joyful, hopeful for things, man. There's, there's too much things to enjoy to be feeling the way we're feeling right now, man. You know what I'm saying? So, what I'm going to do is read some Bible scriptures, some verses about enjoying our lives, and just go from there, all right? All right. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 15. So I commended pleasure, for there is nothing good for a man under the sun except to eat and to drink and to be merry. And this will stand by him in his toils throughout the days of his life, which God has given him under the sun. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 24. There is nothing better for a man than to eat and drink and tell himself that this labor, that his labor is good. This also I have seen that it is from the hand of God. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 9. Enjoy life with the woman whom you love all the days of your fleeting life, which he has given to you under the sun. For this is your reward in life and in your toil, which you have labored, labored under the sun. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 22. I have seen that nothing is better than a man that should be happy in his activities, for that is his lot. For who will bring him to see what will occur after him? The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 20. For he will not often consider the years of his life because God keeps him occupied with the gladness of his heart. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 18. Here is what I have seen to be good and fitting. To eat, to drink, and enjoy oneself in all his labor, in one's all labor, in which he toils under the sun during the few years of his life, which God has given him for this is his reward. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 14. In the day of prosperity, be happy. But in the day of adversity, consider God has made the one as well as the other so that man will not discover anything that will be after him. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 7. Go then, eat your bread in happiness and drink your wine in a cheerful heart, for God has already approved your works. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 13. Moreover, that every man who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor. It is the gift of God. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 12. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19. Furthermore, as for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth, he has also empowered him to eat from them and to receive his reward and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9. Rejoice, young man, during your childhood, and let your heart be pleasant during the days of young manhood, and follow the impulses of your heart and the desires of your eyes. Yet know that God will bring you to judgment for all these things. The book of Psalm, chapter 34, verse 12. Who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 25. For who can eat and who can have enjoyment without him? The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. For the one who desires life to love and to see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. The book of Proverbs, chapter 5, verse 18. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 8. Indeed, if a man should live many years, let him rejoice in them all, and let him remember the days of darkness, for they will be many. Everything that is to come will be futility. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 2. A man to whom God has given riches and wealth and honor so that his soul lacks nothing of all that he desires. Yet God has not empowered him to eat from them, for a foreigner enjoys them. This is vanity and a severe affliction. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 7. The light is pleasant and it is good for the eyes to see the sun. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 6. Even if the other man lives a thousand years twice and does not enjoy good things, do not all go to one place. 
the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, when you will say, I have no delight in them. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 12. For who knows what is good for a man during his lifetime? During the few years of his futile life, he will spend them like a shadow. For who can tell a man what will be after, after him under the sun? The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3. I explored my I explored with my mind how to stimulate my body with wine while my mind was guiding me wisely and how to take hold of folly until I could see what good there is for the sons of men to do under heaven the few years of their lives. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 47 for it is not an idle word for you indeed it is your life and by this word you will prolong your days in the land which you are about to cross the Jordan to possess. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 15. I have seen everything during my lifetime of futility. There is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 8. Let your clothes be white all the time, and let not oil be lacking on your head. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 21. When there is a man who has labored with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, then he gives his legacy to one who has not labored with them. This too is vanity and a great evil. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10. All that my eyes desire, I did not refuse them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart was pleased because of all my labor, and this was my reward for all my labor. The book of John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Hallelujah. An abundant life, y'all. Full life, abundant life. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 3. So that it may be well with you and that you may live long on earth. The book of Job chapter 33 verse 28. He has redeemed my soul from going to the pit and my life shall see the light. The book of Proverbs chapter 9 verse 11. For by me your days will be multiplied and years of life will be added to you. The book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 25. This is the promise which he himself made to us, eternal life. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 2. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Hallelujah. So let's 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 be happy, man. Let's enjoy life, man. All right, let's have fun, man. Let's have these good days. Let's get through these hard times. Let's have this joy and happiness, all right? You know what I'm saying? Live a life that's worth living. You feel me? How that wealth and prosperity, man. You know what I'm saying? Go after that stuff, yo. Work hard and enjoy life, man. That's what it's about. I'm telling y'all, man. I'm telling y'all, live y'all lives, yo. Live your life. I pray to God that whoever listens to I pray that you get baptized, that you have work for the Lord. I pray that you have an awesome life today and in this life. And I pray that you have an awesome afterlife, eternal life, okay? Because, you know, the eternal life, we're going to be living. We're going to be having fun in heaven. Ooh, paths are gold and milk and honey. And we're going to be praising the Lord and the angels. I'm telling you, man, we'll have fun in the afterlife. And eternal life, man, store up riches in heaven. We can have it. We can have fun here, man. You know what I'm saying? Live your life. Have these experiences. Got your comfort zone. All right? Do silly stuff, man, with some awesome people, man. Have fun with some lit people, man. Get out your own way. Stop being so dogmatic. Get out your comfort zone, all right? I'm Jarvis Case. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.